This video has been funded in part by the Guild via Patreon. Check out the links in the description or at the end of this video for more details. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Gildart, and I just got finished with a month's worth of PlayStation Plus Premium, and I have opinions. Now I know when this new version of PlayStation Plus was announced as not only a replacement for the PlayStation Now streaming service, but also as a competitor for the Nintendo lineup of classic games as well as Xbox's Game Pass, people were on the edge of their seats waiting to see what this new service would be like. Touting access to PS1, PS2, PSP, PS3, PS4, and PS5 games, I was extremely interested to see what it would be like. Would we see some Warriors representation? Would I be able to unplug some consoles from the fire hazard that lurks behind my gaming setup? Well, I embarked on my journey to find the truth by paying for a month of premium, which was $21.99 Canadian. This was just a trial, however, to find out if the service was any good and whether it would be worth it to drop the $139.99 annually to get the best deal for the service. Well, spoiler alert, I will not be renewing my subscription of premium until a few things have changed. And in this video, I'm going to go over the good, the bad, and the downright ugly when it comes to the PlayStation Plus Premium Bundle. First of all, I can tell you that I won't be making much use out of the online multiplayer service. I don't really get much time to play games outside of the ones that I'm making videos on. I do try to take the time to play some games as leisure, but most of the time I enjoy playing a single player experience or couch co-op. I have been known to enjoy some online multiplayer games here and there. Destiny was a big part of why I didn't really work too hard on YouTube sooner in my life. It was also a way for me and one of my best friends to bond some more after disconnecting a bit during college. When Destiny 2 released, that same friend group that played the first game didn't really want to play the new one as religiously, and we kind of fell out of it. My wife and I started playing it again when the game and its DLC was available through Xbox Game Pass, and now that it's no longer on there, we don't really play it anymore. Plus now I'd want to play it on PS5 since that version is so much more crisp, even though I don't even own a 4K TV yet. So I don't really have many opportunities to play online and I won't get much use out of that part of the service. That being said, what I would make use out of is the absolute unit of a library ranging from the classic PS1 games all the way up to the most iconic modern AAA titles today. This will be the real worth maker for me. Let's go through the list by generation, starting with the PS1. This list of games is even sadder than that of the PlayStation Classic, and no one bought that piece of shit. What is available here is Ape Escape, Toy Story 2, Hot Shots Golf, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Mr. Driller, Abe's Odyssey, Resident Evil, Siphon Filter, Tekken 2, Wild Arms, Worms Armageddon, and Worms World Part. This list does have a couple of titles that the PlayStation Classic didn't have, but I'm surprised to see the omission of something like Twisted Metal or Cool Borders when Sony owns the rights to them. We also get Tekken 2 instead of Tekken 3, and with Persona 3 through 5 coming to the PS5 in the future, you would think that Atlas and Sega would want to give us the original Persona as part of these games. One thing that I will also say is that it's weird how some of the games are available to purchase outside of the PlayStation service, while others are only available with it. You would think that if it was trying to compete with the Nintendo Classic lineup of games, it would kind of emulate that same sort of, you pay for the service in order to get the game. I don't know if it's the publisher's choice, or Sony's choice, but I'm going to be honest, the only ones that I would actually want to buy when this service is done is Ape Escape, Toy Story 2, Tekken 2, and Wild Arms. From that list, only the first two are available for purchase. The other two, which are the more important ones to me, can only be played through the service. I am also disappointed with the omission of Spyro and Crash, which is understandable given that Sony doesn't own the rights to them. However, only Crash has any appearance in the service with the remakes and it's about time. We don't even get the Spyro Reignited trilogy. It's sad to see Spyro get left behind. First, Crash gets a brand new sequel and he doesn't, and now now he's left on the cutting room floor with this service. What I will say about the PS1 games available here are that they look beautiful. I have used everything known to man to get the best looking PS1 gameplay for my videos. This has included using a PS2 with a component cable and the M Classic upscaler, the PS3 backwards compatibility, emulation, and now the PS5 with the PlayStation Plus Premium service. The best and easiest method was the PS3, but now with the PS5, these games look almost like a full-on remaster. It's no wonder 
some of these games are available for purchase. I would actually pay money to add these to my library if I wasn't making use of the service. On top of that, there are trophies available for some of these games. This gives me even more reason to go back and play these classics. I honestly love what they did with the PS1 games, and I hope to see them improve on this list. Also, even though Final Fantasy VII doesn't appear on the list of classics, it is available along with all the other offline games up to 15, with the exception of 13, thanks to the PS4 list. We also get the Medieval Remake, which excuses its omission from the list, which is more than I can say for Legend of Dragoon. Still holding out for a remake. I do, however, wish I could sing similar praises to the PS2 list. The list of games available for the PS2 catalog are those that were already made available through the arguably failed PS2 on PS4 initiative. When that initiative was originally launched back in 2015, I wanted to make a video on all of the games that I wanted to see brought onto the PS4 console, like the Classic Warriors games. That being said, we only had 54 games released in North America between 2015 and 2019. Apparently, Europe was too good for Eternal Ring because they never got that, and apparently Japan was too good for most of these games because they only got six. None of these titles made any major waves in the community, even though it meant that we got games like Dark Cloud 1 and 2, Wild Arms 3, and Jack and Daxter with upscaled visuals and trophy support. That being said, not all titles are made available through this service. Of the 54 games that you can go and buy right now, only 24 are provided through the service. Some of the titles that aren't on the list but I am lucky enough to already own are the two Harvest Moon games, Psychonauts and The Warriors, the latter of which doesn't really perform the greatest on PS5. In fact, multiple PS2 games don't look so good on PS5, one of which is Okage, which is on the service. Look, I know the service is available to both PS4 and PS5 owners, but come on! If you're going to pick and choose the titles, maybe pick the ones that work best on all consoles. Not only is there a bunch of other titles even above the list of 30 other games that I'd like to see added to this list, the PS2 on PS4 initiative wasn't really handled the greatest either. I don't think it was promoted as much as it could have been, and most companies weren't really participating, instead making their own HD remasters, which the fans appreciated more, like the Devil May Cry collection or Resident Evil 4, which are also a part of the PS3 list of games, or even the Yakuza remakes and remasters, which isn't available on PlayStation Plus, but is available on Xbox Game Pass. A positive of the initiative, in my opinion, was the addition of trophies, which at the time was a step above and beyond what the Xbox was doing with their backwards compatibility. The PS2 on PS4 games also allowed for better visuals overall, but that's where the list of good ends. First of all, this was being done through emulation, so the visuals that are being provided are worse than what we can get with PCSX2. Though some games do still have some compatibility issues with emulation, you can still get a way better visual quality that way. I love the original Dark Cloud. I don't think it was my first PS2 game, but that is always my go-to title when I think of early PS2 era. I'll still play it through the PS4 version to get the trophies, but I will do it begrudgingly. The game does look better through emulation, which is sad to think that they didn't try to make any improvements for this new service. They just took what was already available and gave us a partial list. I'd probably recommend just buying the games that you want to play off of the service rather than paying for the 24 games here. As well, one thing that may have made this service less enticing for me is that I already own many of the PS2 games made available on this list. I already own games like Dark Cloud 1 and 2, Wild Arms 3, and Primal. I didn't really need the service to grant me access to the 13 games I haven't yet purchased. As well, the only reason why I haven't purchased the Jack games yet is because, like I said, the PS2 games weren't given the same sort of upscaling that you get with the PS1 titles. A lot of the visuals still look blurry. In fact, it's better to just play the Jack games on the PS3 HD remaster than it is to play them on the PS4. The only title that's not available through the HD remasters is Jack X Combat Racing, which I will likely pick up eventually. As for the other games, the reason I don't rush to buy them is that some of them are also available on Xbox, and the Xbox One X does a way better job of backwards compatibility. Though they don't get achievements, any and all original Xbox games that are compatible with the Xbox One X receive 16 times the original resolution up to 1920p with super scaling, meaning you'll get better visuals on Xbox than PlayStation. 
Yet another reason why I prefer that lineup of consoles. But what about the seventh generation of consoles? I have major nostalgia for the sixth generation, but I also know that the PS3 and 360 were a big generation in gaming. Well, I'm afraid to say the PS4 backwards compatibility with this lineup of games isn't handled nearly as well as Xbox. In fact, it's the worst aspect of this service. Where the Xbox One X can play a handful of 360 games both straight from the disc and digitally, some of which are available through Game Pass, and even some of those are provided with a list of various upgrades that even a Wikipedia article has been created to keep track of it all. The PS3 games that are available to you through the PlayStation Plus service are... Well, let's get down to brass tacks. The list of titles is massive, even including things like Dynasty Warriors 6 through 8 and Samurai Warriors 4 and the Extreme Legends expansions. The issue here is that all PS3 titles are stream only, meaning if you don't have a good enough connection, you won't even be able to play these games. I even found that when I was downloading other games, I could not play PS3 titles. So if you really want to play something, but you also want to download a brand new game that you paid for, you could be shit out of luck. It's also really weird how many of the PS3 titles are also available on PS4, but it's the PS3 versions that are provided through the service. The Atelier Dusk Trilogy, Dynasty Warriors 8, Bladestorm, Devil May Cry 1 through 4, almost all of the Resident Evil titles, in fact a good chunk of Koei Tecmo's PS3 titles are also available on PS4 and are a part of this stream only bullshit. I was really hopeful this could possibly mean that I could unplug my PS3 and get rid of another set of wires, but the PS3 remains plugged in. This would be more than a power and HDMI cord removed from my setup. Due to the encryption of PS3 video, you need to pass the HDMI video through an HDMI splitter that decrypts the video. So there is a lot I could have removed by this service being available with all of the Warriors titles I could want, but unfortunately even if this list was provided with full 4K support, it's still missing a bunch of Warriors titles for me to unplug this machine. This brings me to the handheld section of the service. We've been talking about the PS1, 2, and 3 offerings, but what about the PSP and Vita? Well, first of all, the only PSP games that are available to play are Eco Chrome and Super Stardust. That is literally it. Eco Chrome is also available on the PS3 list, so I don't know why they didn't try to get any other PSP games, like maybe the God of War games, or even Daxter, which still remains a PSP exclusive, by the way. Neither Eco Chrome or Super Stardust are the greatest of games, or even good titles to show off the PSP visuals on PS5. I'm guessing that the PSP games will receive a similar visual increase to that of the PS1 games. The reason for this is that all of the PS2 titles only have a PS4 version, while the PS1 and PSP titles have both a PS4 version as well as a PS5 version. So maybe once they expand this list a little bit more, we'll see what the PS5 is really capable of doing with PSP titles. Here's hoping it can achieve what PPSSPP can do. I still think Daxter looks beautiful to this day, and I think something like Kingdom of Paradise is well overdue for some love. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any representation from the Vita here. This would have been a great opportunity to port something like Uncharted Golden Abyss, which is stuck on the Vita, and it can't be played on the PSTV. If they could remove the touchscreen functions and replace it with something else, I think this would be great. In fact, games like Soul Sacrifice and Freedom War which Sony has publishing rights to, could be great additions to the list of games available through this service. It just feels like Sony wants to forget the Vita ever existed. Luckily, we can still play Gravity Rush and Tearaway Unfolded thanks to the PS4 list. And I know Tokiden Age of Demons is the only Vita exclusive for that series, but Kiwami and 2 are also available as well. Now I know I've mostly been complaining so far. The only positives that I can say is about the PS1 titles. We're already five consoles in, and the only thing that I can say is is that one console's worth of games look good and have trophy support, one console only has two games representing it, two aren't worth the price of a mission, and one isn't even a part of the thought process. This brings us to the last generation of games, which is where we start to see some of the similarities to that of Xbox's Game Pass.
the PS4 titles available here are definitely worth the price of admission, which is thanks to the fact that they are part of the extra bundle, which is only $17.99 Canadian per month or $114.99 annually. The extra bundle also comes with a list of PS5 games. What is surprising is that there are some titles that have a PS5 version, but are only available as part of the PS4 list, like the first Neo. But luckily, anything that would have a PS5 upgrade from playing the PS4 version would also get that here. This is probably the package that I would say is most worth it. Since you're already getting the monthly games from the Essential Package, which is $11.99 monthly or $69.99 annually, if you also want a library of other titles to take up your time, then the PlayStation Plus Extra Bundle is 100% worth the money. Thanks to this, I got to experience a bit of Ghost of Tsushima, which I'll be keeping an eye out for a physical copy. The last part of the PlayStation Plus Premium Package that I didn't really dive too deep into is the Limited Trials. These are a few new release titles that allow you to play a certain number of hours. I didn't really make much use of this because I didn't want to potentially waste my time. I usually take notes for these scripts while I'm playing the games. I did, however, grab some time with Cyberpunk 2077. The game was fun and did make use of the haptic triggers of the PS5 controller. The other nice thing about these trials is that not only are you able to carry over your save file if you choose to purchase the full game, but you can get a head start on the trophies. I even popped a couple of trophies for Cyberpunk while going through the trial. Ultimately, where PlayStation Plus Premium loses a lot of its charm is with the PS3 selection. A majority, if not all, of the titles have been taken from the PlayStation Now list, of which you can only stream. This part of the service hasn't changed from before. Maybe the streaming is better, maybe it's not. I'm not really the best person to give an opinion on that front because I never paid for PlayStation Now. What I'd like to see is that these PS3 titles become downloadable. Not only that, but give us upscaled 4K visuals, and if the publisher of that title wants to also give us a performance boost that makes use out of the PS5's capability, then let them. But Sony also needs to be a leader in this aspect. If they don't give us 4K 120 frames per second on their PS3 list of games like Infamous and God of War, then why would any other publishers put in that extra effort? Allowing PS3 titles to be downloaded would also let us download the games that we paid for while we play the titles that we're also paying for. The other thing is that this service doesn't give you access to any DLC for PS3 games that you may have paid for. So if I go back and play Dynasty Warrior 7, I can't use any of the DLC. I can also only play either Vanilla or Extreme Legends. Sony should really work with Koei to put out an Extreme Legends Complete Edition that's available through this service with all of the trophies from both games. I imagine a lot of Warriors fans would jump on that. Hell, even if you make the downloading of PS3 games only available for PS5 players, I know that would piss off a lot of people who either can't afford or find a PS5, but at least that would be a small step in the right direction. Sony, just don't fuck us all over. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I won't be renewing my premium subscription. That being said, the extra package is pretty tempting. I know I would lose out on the PS1, PSP, and all the PS2 games I don't already own, but that list is so small. The list of PS4 and 5 games is so good that it is well worth the price. I would be tempted to spend the money for the premium package just to show Sony that we do want these classic consoles featured on the service, but I also don't want them to think that how they're handling the service is right. Maybe paying for some of the PS1 titles that are available for full-on purchase like Ape Escape will lean them in the right direction. All we can do is hope that the big rich corporation will listen to the tiny broke ants before it steps on us. Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe for more. Also, what are your thoughts on the new PlayStation Plus Premium? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to help support this channel and what I do here, you can join the guild, just like these awesome people that you're seeing on screen. Right now, you can join their names at the end of every single video for just a dollar a month over on Patreon. And if you'd like to donate in a one-time fashion, you can join the volunteer unit over on Coffee. There are other rewards and other tiers as well. So check out the links that you see on screen and I will see you all down in the comments.